welcome back to Miss Hyder's Reading Corner. And this week's topic is going to be taking care of yourself and others, which is such an important theme right now, especially during this time of COVID-19. So the whole week is going to be books about taking care of yourself when you're like sick or you're feeling down or you just need a boost or about friends taking care of other friends or family members and I just think this is such an important theme and I hope you enjoy. And today we're going to be reading The Day Snuffy Had the Sniffles which is a Sesame Street book and I love this book. It is so cute. I'm so excited to read it. Oscar the Grouch popped out of his can just in time to see Big Bird skipping down Sesame Street. Go away bird, Oscar grumbled. All that cheerfulness will ruin my day. Besides, it's time to collect the trash. I'm too busy to talk to you. That's okay, Oscar, Big Bird said. I'm in a big hurry to get to Snuffy's house so I can cheer him up. He has the sniffles. Grouches don't know anything about cheering anybody up, said Oscar. But we do know a lot about the sniffles. I have just the thing for you to take to old Snuffle Nose. Wait here. Before Big Bird could say anything, Oscar disappeared into his can, banging the lid shut behind him. Big Bird was waiting impatiently for Oscar when Cookie Monster came along. What's the matter? Cookie asked Big Bird. Somebody eat all your cookies? Worse than that, Big Bird said. Snuffy's got the sniffles and can't come out and play. I'm waiting for Oscar. He has a surprise for me to take to Snuffy. Cheer up surprise, said Cookie Monster. Wait here. He left in such a rush that he nearly ran into Bert. As soon as Bert heard that Snuffy had the sniffles, he told Big Bird, I know just the thing to cheer up a sniffly snuffle up a guess. Wait here. He dashed into 123 Sesame Street before Big Bird could open his beak to say one word. Big Bird popped down on the steps next to Oscar's can. At this rate, I'll never get to see Snuffy, he said. He tapped his foot. He stood up. He paced back and forth. He sat down. Then he did the same thing all over again. Just when Big Bird decided that he couldn't wait one second longer, Bert ran down the steps and handed him a large shoebox. Big Bird peeked inside. It's my bottle cap collection, Bert said proudly. You can lend it to Snuffy. It will give him something fascinating to look at while he's sick in bed. There's nothing more exciting than bottle caps except maybe paper clips. Before Big Bird could answer, Cookie Monster came back. Huffing and puffing, he held out a slightly dented cookie tin. Gee, thanks, Cookie, Big Bird said. He tugged at the lid. I just know Snuffy will enjoy all these cookie crumbs. Cookie Monster shrugged. It's the thought that counts, he said. He brushed chocolate chips and cookie crumbs off his tummy. Sure cheered me up. Just then, Oscar popped back up. Here, bird, he said, the perfect thing for old Sniffy. He placed a jar of something lumpy and green on top of the shoebox and cookie tin. It's an old family recipe handed down from Grand Grouch to Mom Grouch. It's sure to cure even snuffleupagus sized sniffles, sardine and sauerkraut soup. Bert and Cookie Monster held their noses. Blech! They said, you'd better get a move on, Bird, said Oscar. Can't let that soup get too warm. Sardine and sauerkraut soup only tastes its worst when it's good and cold. Juggling the shoebox, the cookie tin, and the smelly grouch soup, Big Bird started off again. He was glad to be on his way to Snuffy's at last. He got as far as the library when he met Betty Lou. As soon as she heard where Big Bird was going, Betty Lou said, I know just the thing to cheer up Snuffy. Come on. Before Big Bird could make a peep, Betty Lou took him up the steps into the library. Everyone's sure in a hurry to make me wait, said Big Bird, looking around. Finally, Betty Lou came back. She balanced a thick book on top of Big Bird's bundles. Here's an animal picture book for Snuffy to look at all by himself. 
and here's a monster storybook for his mother to read to him. She piled an even thicker book on top of the first one. There's nothing like a good book to cheer you up, she said. Big Bird's arms were so full he couldn't wave goodbye to Betty Lou. It's a good thing Snuffy's cave isn't far, he said. What do you have there, Big Bird? The Count called from the castle window. One shoebox, one tin, one jar, two books. Wonderful! Big Bird told the Count why he was in a hurry. I have just the thing for your friend, the Count said. Wait here. After what seemed like hours to Big Bird, the Count came out of his castle and handed him a box of tissues. Snuffy can count them and count them as much as he pleases, and they'll come in handy whenever he sneezes, the Count said. Crinkled and wrinkled tissues stuck out of the box. I counted them myself. There are 200 tissues, he told Big Bird. Big Bird tiptoed quietly past Gladys' cow barn. My, my, you do have your hands full, said Gladys. These are surprises for Snuffy, Big Bird explained. He has the sniffles. I've been trying all morning to go cheer him up. Well, any cow knows there's only one way to do that, Gladys said. Wait here. Not again, Big Bird said, but Gladys had already trotted into the barn. Gladys's cheer-up present turned out to be a pint of ice cream. It was getting soft and soggy in the noontime sun. Nothing puts you in a good mood like ice cream, Gladys said. Her bell tinkled as she balanced the squishy ice cream carton on top of the wrinkled tissues and the books and the jar and the empty cookie tin and the shoebox. Big Bird watched the sticky pink drops fall onto his toes. It's strawberry, Gladys explained. Big Bird finally made it to Snuffy's cave without dropping a single present. He pushed open the front door with his foot. Then he had a terrible thought. I brought all these presents for Snuffy and not a single one of them is from me. I forgot to bring Snuffy a present. Big Bird sighed a deep sigh and shifted the slippery pile of presents. I hope Snuffy won't be too disappointed, he said. And there was Snuffy, propped up on huge stuffed pillows in his snuffleupagus sized bed. On a tray in front of him were a glass of orange juice, a box of cough drops, a coloring book, and a box of crayons. Snuffy had an ice pack on his head and a thermometer sticking out of his mouth. Snuffy's mom took the thermometer and studied it for a moment. No more fever, she said. She took a bottle and measured the orange sniffles medicine into a spoon. Snuffly swallowed it all. She gave Snuffy a big hug. Cheer up, she told him. You'll be out of bed in no time. Uh-oh, Big Bird said. The cheer up surprises were slipping from his grasp. Uh, 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 chew! Snuffy sneezed a giant snuffle sneeze that rattled everything in the room. The presents crashed onto the floor. Oh dear, Snuffy's mother said. Big Bird stood in the doorway, feeling sadder than ever. How could he cheer up Snuffy now? Snuffy blew his snuffles into a handkerchief the size of a tablecloth. Then he smiled at Big Bird. Oh, Bird, he snuffled. How did you guess what I wanted to cheer me up? Big Bird stared at the mess on the floor. What's that, Snuffy, he asked. The bottle caps, the cookie crumbs, the melted ice cream, or the sardine and sauerkraut soup? No, Bird, Snuffy answered. It's a visit from you. And that cheered up Big Bird, too. So I hope you enjoyed the first read aloud about taking care of yourself and others. And I will see you tomorrow for another read aloud about taking care of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.